So I wanted to make a little bit of a follow-up part two to my video that I made yesterday about pruning mulberries. And after watching it, I wanted to clarify a couple things. I talked about managing the tree for one-year-old wood and to have as much one-year-old wood in the canopy as you possibly can. And that's 100% true. But I also talked about the other component of it, which is kind of managing the size of the tree. So people talk about pruning back mulberries really hard because if you don't, they'll get huge and the berries will get out of reach of you and the birds will get tons of them and they'll just, the tree will get so big, a ton of the fruit will be out of picking range. So, and that's 100% true. So it's kind of like, you'll hear people talk about what I was saying yesterday to prune the tree back hard when it's dormant before it breaks dormancy and you'll get new growth flush out which will set fruit it will so i don't it's you kind of have to do both things so like this tree my my end game is to develop a scaffold you know of of main branches so in this tree you have this big one and there's some scaffold here there's scaffold here on the other side there's some big scaffold limbs which are like the main frame right and then my goal is to get each one of these scaffolds like this to form sort of a sub scaffold of its own here like this here and then if i can get that to branch See, like here, I, I took off a big one here. And it's got two, three little spurs that formed. You can see here, I took off a big scaffold limb, headed it back, and now I got two here. So in the next spring, what I'll probably do is I'll take back here and here. And I'll keep this branch, so the scaffold as time goes on will increase in complexity. But if you see where I have the tree, I don't have infinite amount of room for it to go this way. So I wanna head the tree back, you know, to where I have those branch scaffolds, maybe even a little more, and break some more buds because I wanna manage the canopy for one year old wood, but I also don't, the tree has a limited amount of space you know overall because i've got some a couple different kinds of bananas mantinga i got papayas here some other bananas carambola some mango tree <clears throat> so i don't want this tree to get as big as it's able to get if i just let it grow completely unchecked and again what i was talking about is that what will happen is that you'll get a big wide tree and the fruit is at the ends of the branches. So you'll end up with all this space in the middle where there's going to be no fruit. So the, the pruning is a double effect of heading back the branch and keeping this kind of heading back to your scaffold limbs. So bring it back to the scaffold and then let the all these dormant buds that are on the scaffold will break for your and I do that, I would do it after I pick fruit. You could do it either way. And like once every couple years, you may have to come back and take even some of your scaffolds way back. So it's not that hard pruning is something that you should never do. You know, I did what I consider to be a pretty hard pruning. Like this tree was taken back almost basically flush with where my finger's going here. Just like hat rack in the spring. And I'll probably do that again next year, but all these scaffold limbs will get much bigger. But I want to make as much complexity in the scaffold structure as possible that I can head back to. If I just take it back to a stump, like right here, it'll push a bunch of buds out, which will... But if I do that in the spring, that fruit is coming on the... on Some of those buds will break and form fruit, but I the fruit... It's this matured, hardened up, one-year-old wood is where most of the fruit sets. And your best quality fruit, in my experience, 
and from everything I've seen with my own trees and trees that I find in the wild and trees that I find, you know, growing in various places around town. So again, I just wanted to clarify because one of the, you know, my favorite authorities on growing mulberries, David the Good, he talks about just be brutal with your mulberries. And he's right, because if you don't, they will get out of control. But there's a double-edged thing there. See, I was kind of leery with my mulberry at the beginning because I didn't want to prune it too hard because I wanted mulberries. I planted the thing so I can get fruit. And I haven't really, the tree's two and a half years old now, and it hasn't produced a huge crop. But with what the tree is now and the amount of one-year-old wood that's in the canopy, I should get a big crop next season and subsequent seasons after. So the idea is to, you know, every year come in here and just hat rack this thing and bring it back to that scaffold, which that scaffold's not really going to be getting way bigger drastically every year, maybe a little, but it's not going to be getting way bigger. And then I can bring it back to the scaffold and let it come back out with the one year old wood. Bring it back to the scaffold and let it come back out with the one year old wood. So, but that scaffold, ideally that scaffold will increase in complexity over time and have more branches in the scaffold structure that gets hacked back. And then again, more buds break, more one year old wood is gonna shoot out. So I just wanted to give that little bit of nuance to that to where if you're afraid to prune your mulberries back super hard when they're dormant maybe they're kind of young let them fruit then cut them back and then they'll set all this new bud wood in the growing season do a harsh prune after they set fruit then let it grow and you can prune throughout the growing season they're so vigorous they don't mind being pruned all throughout the growing season, particularly here in Florida. So you can prune them and train them during the growing season to manage the one-year-old wood like I was talking about. And, you know, you can, but at the same time, you want to manage the size. Again, like this branch could come out as one whip this long, but if I head it back, I might be able to get three branches in the same amount of space. I now have three branches instead of one. So that's the idea of the, the managing the size of the tree and also the age of the wood. So I don't want the one year old wood to be 20 feet that way, you know, when the tree gets big. I want the one year old wood to stay tight to the canopy up here and not go way up above my head where I can't reach it. So, I don't mind sharing fruit with the birds, but I wanna get most of my fruit. You know, the way I kinda of look at it is I wanna be able to walk under my trees pretty easily and stand under the canopy to be able, and I can reach up, I'm six feet tall, I can get to a lot of my wood. But I like there to be an understory and it's kind of open under here and I can walk and move around under the tree. I don't want it to necessarily just be super low to the ground because then I don't have any other space under here to which to do things or to mulch. It becomes a little harder, etc. That's just the way I like to do it. But I just wanted to add a little bit of nuance to what I said yesterday because I just realized I didn't kind of clarify that. So check it out.